Hello, everyone. Good to see you once again. Uh, we're going to kick off things here with the first round of the New Beverage Showdown Finals. Uh, the rules are a little different from the semifinals yesterday. I'm just going to go through them pretty quickly. Uh, in each part, uh, three finalists have five minutes to present, and the judges have five minutes to critique the presentation. The judges are also going to sample their beverages on stage. Uh, immediately following the second session, judges are going to depart to confer on who won the competition. The judges, are going to, the judges are going to return to the main stage at 3.15 for a little bit of a debrief and for the winner announcement. And uh, let's talk about the aforementioned judges and name them. Or not name them, but introduce them. We have Craig Fleischman, who's the co-founder of Purely Righteous Brands. Nicole Fry, who is a managing partner with First Beverage Group. Kim Page, who is the VP of Marketing and Innovation for Venturing and Emerging Brands, a unit of Coca-Cola. Ken Sadowski, <clears throat> a superstar. But Ken Sadowski, who is the Senior Beverage Advisor for Verlinvest, and of course, John Craven, the Founder and CEO of BevNet. All right, let's bring up our first finalist. It's 1821 Bitters, and it's Missy and Kristen Kofid. Come on up. Round of applause. Yeah. Guys, you know the deal. You got your timer, and you got two mics right there. I'm Missy. And I'm Kristen. And we're the owners of 1821. We're a craft cocktail mixer company based out of Atlanta, Georgia, specializing in bitters, syrups, shrubs, ginger beer, and tonic. We're named after the 18th and 21st Amendments of the US Constitution, which bookended prohibition because prohibition launched the craft cocktail movement. 1821 was really born out of the desire for excellent and superior craft cocktail mixers. For hundreds of years, bitters have been used as an essential ingredient in cocktails like the Old Fashioned and the Manhattan. Ginger beer is gaining popularity by being used in one of the number one most ordered cocktails in the world, which is a Moscow Mule. And syrups are used in every cocktail from a gimlet to a margarita. Uh, we make flavors um, that derive from our inspiration from different types of food. And this is really what differentiates us in the market. Uh, we have a tart cherry and saffron bitters, which um, was inspired by Persian cuisine. Our jalapeno lime and cilantro syrup is reminiscent of a Mexican dish. And this is really is what has set us apart in the market. Um, we use flavors like these as well as uh, 40 other SKUs in order to penetrate the market uh, from everyone from the novice home bartender that wants to make a consistent craft cocktail at home to the guy with a mustache and the suspenders at your craft cocktail bar. Last year, we opened a retail store in Atlanta's version of Chelsea Market. We've had the really unique opportunity to connect with our customers in a way that we didn't imagine. Every day, we have the chance to educate them on who we are, what we do, and how to make better cocktails with individual tastings and weekly cocktail classes, and the results have been outstanding. It's like having a daily flavor focus group. Our online growth has increased 288%, with our on-premise sales increasing 181%, and customers asking for us by name. So bartenders know when they serve our product, their customers are getting a cocktail that they're going to love. There's no other store in our category that will let you taste through their entire line to find something that's just right for you. And in this, we've created an awesome experience. Now, I know you guys are really healthy, but hands up, who likes to drink? I'm going to bring you guys hey, people. Awesome. So while Missy does that, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, what our experience was like while we were here last year and what we're doing here today. So last year we got um, a little bit of feedback from the judges, and the feedback was, what about going into RTD? Now for us, we weren't really sure if that was the right area for us to be in, if that really aligned with our business plan and our brand, who we were. But we wanted to take their advice into consideration, and that's exactly what we did. We went home, we gave it a lot of thought, we gave it a lot of consideration, and in following the natural evolution of our brand and where we were going, we found a really happy medium. We decided to take our two top products, our number one seller, our ginger beer and our tonic, which are currently in a concentrate form that you have to add soda water to to carbonate. And we decided to carbonate them to make it even one step easier for our consumer. Our distributors came to us and they requested our ginger beer be canned and carbonated. A national <laughs> hotel chain requested our tonic carbonated. And when we discussed it with our customers, they were thrilled at the thought of having a product that was even easier and more convenient to make consistent craft cocktails with. 
One of our distributors projects they will order 6,000 cases a month. You're drinking out of the sample bottles right now. If you look behind me on the screen, there's the prototype can, which will launch Q1 of 2017. We use the similar label that we use on our core product line with officials from Prohibition pouring liquor into the streets. Um, it's an 8.4 ounce can because after extensive market research, this was the perfect balance and size to make a cocktail with for on and off premise use and reduces waste for our customers, which contributes to our customers' bottom line. Speaking of numbers, how are ours? Over the past year, we've more than doubled our revenue with us recently securing national distribution, which also launches Q1 of 2017, <laughs> and major hotel chains and cruise lines becoming large customers of ours, we're on track to hit just over 1.9 million in 2017 and 4.6 million in 2018. By utilizing a co-packer, our margins will increase on our lowest profit product from 56 to 66%. We're conservative with our financial forecasting models, beating projections consistently with an upwards trajectory, and we expect this growth and demand to continue. And our positioning, 1821, to be the craft cocktail mixer. I hope you guys enjoy your samples. I have some more for those of you that didn't get any. Thank you. Cheers. Well done, well done. And I give you Thank Mike, you. and you can have Mike, and I'll slide over here. All right, pretty tight presentation. Well done, guys. Um, so, Kim, I want to start with you. Uh, what do you think of 1821's approach to crafting a better cocktail? Yes, I really like the, uh, the simplicity of the story. I like the linkage to prohib prohibition. I have actually tried it, being from Atlanta, uh, but I didn't, um, I, I was reminded that I had actually tried it before by the uh, apothecary type bottle, so I really love the packaging. I'm uh, a little bit more fond of the ginger beer flavoring, but I like where you're going in terms of having the more forward um, uh, ingredients in terms of the overall taste, so really uh, well done. Greg, this is your second time seeing the brand. Uh, what do you think of uh, the presentations today and how they've evolved? Well, I love this space. I love it going in and, and kind of modernizing the cocktail. Um, I guess for me, I would have wanted to see a little bit more differentiation in what makes 1821 uh, cocktail mixers special. Is it, you know, you're using organic ingredients or using any of those other attributes that people seem to care about? Or make it more obvious on the package what makes this different from the other mixers that you might find in the category? Um, I probably would have wanted to see it. I mean, the apothecary bottles, I mean, look at how much packaging structure plays into disrupting brand, brands becoming disruptive. So health aids, apothecary really, I think, turned the kombucha category on its head, wishing you guys maybe wouldn't have done the can and maybe would have done something else that could have said. The reason the can was done is because yeah. um, our customers requested it specifically in a can format. We were going to yeah. go with apothecary, but yeah. since that request was issued, we decided to to meet with their demands, because glass doesn't work in wells. Where's it gonna be in the store? It's gonna be in, um, we're selling it through our distributors, so they'll go through liquor stores, um, they'll go through uh, bars, restaurants, nightclubs, cruise ships, hotels, mini bars. Having said what I said, the, um, I love ginger beer. I like have tried everyone out there. That's one of the better ones. Thank you. Great bite, great sweetness, and then the tonic is phenomenal. So. Thank you. And I do a lot of tonic every day. Well done. Uh, John, uh, yes, yeah, speaking of the formulation, I saw black peppercorns in there, kind of interesting for a ginger beer. What'd you, what's your take on the formulation? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of like what Greg said, I honestly, I like the tonic better than the ginger beer. It's a lot more memorable and, you know, it wasn't the one that I reached for first, certainly, since, you know, ginger beer is kind of, you know, generally a drinkable, enjoyable thing anyway. But, um, yeah, I mean, phenomenal job with that. Um, you know, ginger beer is great, but I, I think that one is definitely the more... Uh, unique and interesting of the two, so. Thank you. Ken, what's your take on 1821? Well, I like the flavor forward part of both executions. I mean, they're sweet and they're, uh, the flavor is pretty balanced or very balanced. I thought that it should be more carbonated because you know it's getting diluted. So I think you did a good job of putting the flavors forward, c knowing that it's going to be diluted, but you didn't anticipate the carbonation level it to is, do that same thing. It was difficult to carbonate in the sample bottles um, without going through our co-packer and having a whole, you know, 100 pallet line of cans for you guys for it. So it'll be more carbonated. Though. A little more carbonated in the cans. Okay. Nicole, um, your thoughts on the presentation and sort of the category of uh, cocktail mixers and premium cocktail mixers? 
Yeah, no, I think it was a great presentation. I've been familiar with the brand for, for a little over a year, and I think evolving from the um, you know smaller bidders and shrubs into the larger scale categories is really smart because you're coming from a place place of authenticity, and I think having the retail format in Atlanta to really elevate that is just a really smart way to go about it because another canned craft cocktail or another ginger beer um, would not differentiate you, and I think you further differentiated it with the black can. I think the can's great. Um, I think you're seeing a lot of craft beer companies move to cans, and I think it's a really, really smart way to differentiate yourself from the outset. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have 30 seconds left. Did any of you have any questions for Missy or Kristen? I'm just happy she's not coughing today. <laughs> scotch. I had scotch this morning. <laughs> oh, well done. Where's it. ours? I want some no, scotch. All right. Meet up with Kristen for liquor later on. Great job. Let's Thank you very much. Appreciate it.